Okay, here we're going to create uh, some products that are scrolling across the screen, uh, but they're going to be behind a window, a little cutout area. It'll be a circular cutout, and uh, we'll have uh, most of the screen space put uh, advertisements uh, or text, uh, the price, the product, uh, that sort of thing, and uh, we'll have the product scrolling through. Uh, and we've got a large banner uh, created in Photoshop that has each of the products. We're just going to move that uh, across every few seconds to reveal a new product. So we're going to go, as usual, to New Composition, 720 by 486 square pixels. Uh, double click in here. We're going to go to Product Banner. And everything else that we create will be just solid layers. We're going to choose March Layers. Click OK, and we'll drag that in. OK, this, uh, as you see, is a large file. And if I drag this across, we've got highlighters, post-it notes, and tape. And we'll just leave it with those three for right now. And we're also going to go and create a couple of solid layers. The first one is going to be... Um, kind of a um, um, bluish color. Right about there. Our other one is going to be kind of green. This is a nice color scheme for uh, for when you want to create kind of excitement about a product. Uh, and so what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, go to our ellipse tool. We want to make sure that we're staying within safe areas. So I'm going to turn this on. It'll safe and action safe. And we're going to click right through here. However, uh, and I'm holding down shift to make sure it stays circular. We want this to be a hole rather than a solid circular uh, image or plate, if you will. So I'm going to go to subtract. Now we have a blue, uh, sort of like a plate, and uh, a green, our green layers behind that. We turn the blue on on and off that's what we got uh, obviously we want to add some depth to this um, we want if we want this blue to appear that it's on top of this uh, uh, green then we certainly want to uh, have some kind of shadow in here or something to differenti differentiate both of these maybe to add a sense of space between this layer and this layer. So uh, we'll go up to effect and perspective and choose drop shadow. So we we got our drop shadow. Uh, we're going to increase the distance quite a bit. Not a whole lot, but right about there. And we definitely want some softness to the shadow. So I'm going to ramp it up to about 25. See what that looks like. And we'll go a little bit more, about 35. And I don't want it too dark as, as to take away from the object being advertised. So I'm going to take that down a little bit to 40. And that looks good right there. We'll also have some text out here displaying what that item is. And, uh, and that way we'll uh, go put shadows on that too to add even a, a greater sense of depth. Well... As you can see, we don't have this product banner layer in the right location, so we're going to drag that up towards between the blue and the green. There you see our uh, tape peeking through there. We're going to need to scale this down a, a bit. And we want to move that towards right in front and center. 
All right, and we're also going to need to add a drop shadow to this as well. Now we could add um, like a fake shadow here as if it's sitting on a floor, but with this shadow, it, it makes this green appear that it's, it's upright, not a floor, a horizontal floor. So we want to just add a normal drop shadow to this as well, to this tape. So we're going to do that now, and we'll just go, uh, our previously used effects will show up on the top. So I'm going to just click drop shadow there, and we're going to increase the distance again, increase the softness, drag that out. And that'll be good right there. I want the lighting to, to match. All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead and click on our product banner, hit P for position, and we're going to drag this over until the highlighters display. Okay. So what we'll do is uh, we need to zoom in quite a bit on the timeline here. down to the seconds. We're going to click on position. I'm going to move this to about, uh, let's say, three seconds. Yeah, let's go two and a half. Don't want it up there too long. When it comes to broadcast, you want things pretty quick. Just boom, boom, boom. Um, so what we'll do is uh, I'm sorry, this needs to this first keyframe needs to be over here. I'm going to shift drag it over to snap it to there. So this is going to be up for about two and a half seconds. And then quickly, in a matter of about 10 frames, maybe 15, we'll jump over to three seconds. We want this to come off and the next one be revealed, which means we're just going to move this, holding down shift to keep it horizontal, where the post-it notes come in. Okay, so got this showing up. Uh, look at our highlighters, and another one comes in. And we'll have that one showing for about two and a half seconds. Right now we're at three, two and a half seconds would put us at five seconds and about 17 frames. So, and 5.15, could hit control right arrow to go frame by frame to move it frame by frame. And what we want to do is copy this frame so that it's, a, it's over here. Because if we, if we move this over and then just move this off the screen, it's not sit there for that two and a half seconds. Watch what happens if I drag this across now. Now if I go back and scroll, there's our highlighters. They come in. And you see those start, those are crawling off the screen. We want them to stay there. Okay, so what we're going to do is just delete that frame. And our post-it notes jump back into place. And we want to copy this frame from here to there. So we're just going to hit Control-C with that highlighted yellow. Control-C. And then Control-V, which will paste it right where our time marker is. And that way they stay there. So now we want to go about 10 frames to 525, or we'll just jump on over 6. And we'll move it off the screen. Again, holding down Shift to lock it into place, and our next object comes in. And then that's going to stay, and we don't have any others, but this is the way you would typically do it. Um, and probably from the beginning, I should have showed you what the, the graphic looked like. That's what our graphic looks like. That's all photoshopped. Uh, there's no background whatsoever. The black is indicating that it's empty space with an alpha channel. So we've scrolled it to show the highlighters and then brought it to the left to show the post-it notes through the window. And then again for the tape. So over here... On the right side, uh, you synchronize some text. 
Um, we can put some text here saying highlighters. Uh, say uh, three pack dollar nine. Now let's put them on sale dollar twenty nine. So we can make this pretty big and bold. Not quite that big. We're going to run out of space. Wouldn't hurt to have it going over a little bit there. But uh, let's make this a little bit uh, smaller. And space this over. And let's go a tad bit smaller. Get it away from that uh, circular edge there. Of course, we want to change our leading here. This is called leading. And let's let's make these a little bit smaller as well. And adjust the spacing there. On those. All right. And so then we could take our drop shadow. Apply it to that. Add our softness. We'll put go 15. Uh, doesn't have to necessarily be the same settings as what we've got in here. Um, but uh, but that uh, that looks okay. Now we could, if we wanted, make these really pop off the screen. We could put the opacity or the yeah the opacity on the shadow to 75, and we can change our text to a much lighter color. We'd say maybe close to white. 230, anything above 235 on your RGB for white will not show up on a uh, uh, television screen, uh, NTSC standard. Uh, so you want to keep it at 235 or lower for whites or off-whites. You don't want to just ramp it up to 255 uh, because that um, the available colors on a television for NTSC um, are limited, and therefore it doesn't display whites that are above 235. So that's no extra charge. Okay, so we got white here with a nice drop shadow there. The text really pops off the screen. Uh, once those um, highlighters jump off the screen, we could have our text fade out rather quickly. We would want to line that, that opacity change on our text, line that up with our position keyframe. So we'll hit our stopwatch, shift drag to the next keyframe, turn to zero, that fades out, and then we would want to bring in our next line of text which of course would be a brand new layer. Just duplicate this one, change the, the content of the text, and, and go from there. That is going to fade out, and we could bring in our next line of text, post-it notes, four pack, um, $1.99, or whatever. So that's how you would uh, create a nice effect with uh, a window showing uh, your products through the window and uh, adding a nice drop shadow to add depth to your to your window.